Hi, so I'm Chica Restrepo. Uh, I'm a French international student. I came to Canada in 2018 uh, where I joined the York University. I graduated in science and biology and I then joined the public health school at uh, the University of Montreal in 2022. Uh, I had the chance to work as a gravimetry analyst for the early time. It was a really nice experience. I learned how it's possible what to work in a lab, but uh, uh, I also had the chance to develop all my skills and to learn about all the, the creative procedures that comes along. Uh, I'm also a teaching assistant in biostatistics at the public health school at the University of Montreal. It's a really nice experience for me, and I had the, I had the chance to learn uh, to develop my uh, pedagogic um, uh, skills and experiences throughout the experience. So I'm in my second year of my master's of public health. Uh, I am uh, writing about uh, pregnant women for infection with both the Zika virus and HIV in Latin America. Uh, it's a really... Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a really important matter because uh, Zika has kind of been... Um, uh, neglected those last few years, but there's actually a lot of projections that show that with climate change, it, it might come back like globally. So it's important to work on that. So this is basically the model we developed with my peers that uh, it's a multi-compartmental model that takes into account the pregnant woman, their offspring, and the uh, vectors mainly responsible for Zika virus transmission. My areas of expertise are public health, epidemiology, as well as biology. And uh, I'm at the beginning of my academical career, but I aspire to work in a public health setting, uh, as well as to promote uh, health among vulnerable population. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ariel Mundo. I am a PhD uh, in biomedical engineering. I am a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Montreal. And uh, thank you for being uh, today here for, for this brief presentation. So a little bit of background and experience. So I did my, my uh, bachelor's in chemical engineering in Guatemala. Uh, I'm, I am from Guatemala. I finished my bachelor's in 2009. Uh, then I went to work for a while into industry and higher education. I worked in a couple of companies that did uh, industry products, uh, dairy products, uh, doing quality assurance. And then I went back and had the opportunity to do some teaching at my alma mater. And then in 2017, I went to the University of Arkansas to get my PhD in biomedical engineering, uh, where I mainly work with uh, animal models to study uh, cancer biology, uh, a mix of optics, uh, statistical modeling, and, and animal work. And then in 2022, when I finished my, my uh, PhD, I came straight here to the University of Montreal to do my, uh, start my postdoc in public health. So some work and research uh, experience and skills. Uh, so from industry, the time I spent in industry, I got a good deal of problem solving. The, the, the places where I work, uh, I had to deal with you know, personnel, uh, quality assurance, uh, delivering reports, uh, and team management. So I was in charge of a production of a dairy product in a company where I worked, and I had a team of maybe 10 people, and I had to make sure that you know, we were working as a team at all times. From my tenure in higher education, I did mentoring with students, I did curriculum development, I helped uh, develop new um, manuals for a laboratory, in the, in, the, in the course I was teaching. And of course, I did teaching. I had to prepare the lectures and make sure that you know, everything was, was going along. Then from a PhD, as I said, it was a combination of optics. I did a, a bunch of work with spectroscopy, uh, molecular biology, a lot of lab work, bench work as well. 
uh, small animal handling, actually working with mice and doing experiments, and then uh, ex designing the experiments and making sure that you know we had a, a timeline and everything was delivered on time. Uh, a lot of technical writing and public speaking. And then for the statistical part, it was more about uh, using R and doing uh, generalized entity models to analyze the data we were getting, and of course a bunch of experience with R. And I actually got a chance to do some grant writing at that stage. I'll talk a little bit about, a little bit about that later on. And then uh, during my uh, postdoc, which is in public health, I have had the opportunity to work with uh, uh, survey data, so doing survey analysis, uh, again, grant writing, and a bunch of technical writing, and more work with R. So some achievements and accomplishments. So uh, our lab uh, got a grant for, from CHR this year. I was a co-investigator in that grant. I worked, uh, you know, shaping the grant and writing the grant so we could, you know, get it submitted. I had to collaborate with a, with a lot of people, but a lot of collaborators were involved in it. And so my role in that was, was like as a co-investigator. Uh, and when I was doing my PhD, I actually got a chance to like, during the last year of my PhD, to actually uh, submit a proposal to the Arkansas Bioscience Institute to fund the lab work I had to do for the last year. So I was the main author, I was submitted with my, with my PI and uh, we got funded and that helped me achieve the last part of my PhD. And awards, so uh, the first year I, I was here at uh, University of Montreal, my postdoctoral training was actually funded from MEPH, the Mathematics for, for Public Health and CRM. Uh, I also was part of what they call the uh, BME Rising Scholars. You know, we had a cohort for people that were trying to develop uh, mentoring and follow up after we got our PhD back in, in, in the States. So I was part of that first cohort. And I also uh, got a uh, faculty, uh, sorry, a Fulbright Faculty Development uh, Fellowship, which was actually what funded the first years of my PhD studies. So areas of interest for future, future jobs. Uh, I'm looking uh, for roles that are, you know, at the intersection of biomedical engineering because of my background, also public health and, and data science. So for example, you know, work where uh, there was a combination of uh, statistical analysis and uh, uh, lab work that would be that would be uh, of my interest a combination where we, we, we I could also have um, statistical workflows are the, the sort of thing that would be also of interest and writing I had developed a great deal of uh, writing skills because my tenure doing grants and uh, writing papers and so on uh, medical writing technical writing roles well uh, or roles that are within administration and research uh, like project coordinator or as a um, research associate, not showing here, but research associate as well. And uh, here are the links, you know, for my website, my list of publication is in my website, uh, my handle for, for X now and, and Blue Sky. And I'll have a poster outside, so I'll happy to answer any question later on. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Payam Paymani, uh, a pharmacy doctorate by training and PhD of pharmacoepidemiology. And I'm from University of Manitoba. I was postdoc, and recently I started my new position as research associate at University of Manitoba. Uh, a quick view about my education. I started my scientific journey from Shiraz University. I got my pharmacy doctorate and then PhD of pharmacopidemiology. And then I start my uh, fellowship course in drug safety and pharmacovigilance in Switzerland, University Hospital of Zurich, a joint collaboration and position between uh, University of Zurich and Novartis company. So I was working uh, for uh, Novartis at Basel and University Hospital in Zurich. Uh, and uh, then I start my first postdoc at, uni at Erasmus Medical University in Netherlands. And finally, I came to Canada two years ago, 2021. I came to Canada and I start my first position in Canada as a fellow researcher. And fortunately, I became a fellow researcher fellow, a fellow for CAMCO, Canadian Mother-Child Cohort, as the first postdoc to get the this bursary at 2022. And my area of experience, as you can see, is 
real-world evidence generation by using a different source, such as observational study, specifically cohort, administrative, and all kinds of data repository by focus on healthcare utilization and specifically medication, safety of medication. And in addition, I'm working with big data to develop AI and smarts-based model algorithm for drug safety, for example, to predict uh, adverse drug reaction by focusing on pregnant people and children. My expertise and my project for, uh, focus on pregnant people and children. As you can see, my skills, uh, I have extensive experience working with different database in Europe, European countries, and in Canada, such as uh, WHO Uppsala Drug Monitoring Centers, a biggest database focused on safety of medication, worked with Swiss Medic, FDA of Switzerland, Dili, a European uh, network for drug-induced liver injury, and Rotterdam study as a, one of the biggest cohorts that started in 1985 until yet. And in Canada, I'm working with Manitoba Center for Health Policy as a data repository. And recently, I started some project on CAMCO, Canadian model chart cohort, in across the Canada, more than six provinces. We have uh, data of more than 20 million uh, mother and more than 5 million ch children, all the data from 20 years until yet and is ongoing. And regarding the skills, I have uh, uh, some uh, successful grants started from Switzerland and Novartis. We got uh, uh, grants and then started the University of Manitoba from URGP and recently New Frontiers. I will explain it more a bit. And I'm happy that um, uh, I'm working on knowledge translation part for all my project. So I'm preparing knowledge translation reports for different clients, such as pharmaceutical companies, policymakers, clinician, Ministry of Health for different sectors to deliver our results as a knowledge translation report. Uh, if you want, uh, I want to explain a bit about my research experience, uh, I was working at a different position, I started after my PhD, research assistant, research associated, consultant, epidemiological and a statistical consultant, senior researchers, uh, and as you can see, A to Z for designing a project, conducting, managing and coordinating, I just highlight uh, most recent uh, that is focused in my Canadian experience from 2021, pharmacopidemiology and pharmacogenomics, specifically for anti-diabetic medication, to predict what happened, for example, in case what happened, some patients change from the oral medication to insulin, what happened, what uh, epidemiological factor or genetic factors rush and force the patient to change the medication. Uh, Post-marketing soil violence for drug-induced liver injury is most interested project for Novartis that is funded by Novartis to find what happened, what the factors cause drug-induced liver injury in a patient as the most important cause of liver transplantation in Switzerland, one of the most important problem and burden of disease. And in Canada, as you can see, uh, we have a four successful grant. We are working on safety of COVID-19, specifically in pregnant people, safety of COVID and on uptake. And the third uh, project is in a big puzzle, safety of anti-seizure medication in pregnant people and children. For example, we have evidence that show if pregnant mother use anti-seizure medication, the risk of ADHD or autism or mal formation, specifically congenital, significantly increase. We are working with a consortium across the world in Europe, Nordic country, US, United States, and in Canada, CAMCO, to increase our population, of increase our sample size to show. And finally, we are trying to find uh, some models and algorithms to predict and find the casual intervents. Some achievement, as I told you, I became a, a flow from CAMCO as the first postdoc in Canada to get this bursary. And this is our recent grant, successful grants from CIHR for four years for mother child for COVID vaccine from Manitoba, Research Manitoba. And finally, is neurodevelopmental by translational approach. We are working translational approach uh, using the big data, 
uh, algorithm and on the other side on the animal mouse our collaborator to generate the disease as a translational approach funded by new frontiers and my publication as the first author are uh, corresponding authors as you can guess my field of interest is maternal child health outcome by using real world data any source and finally uh, design or shape precision medicine through the big data to for two different aspect one casual interference to create the uh, algorithm and then predictive models predict the adverse drug reaction and we are in the middle of this one for example we can predict with more than 90 percent if these factors continues, the baby maybe have autism or ADHD with this current situation. And I'm interested to continue as a pharmacopidemiologist, but in pharmaceutical or medical companies or CROs to work uh, to join, to connect the university, academia to industry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, so my name is Tanya Phillipson. I am currently a master's student at the University of Victoria in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics. Um, I'm completing my Master of Science degree in Applied Mathematics um, tentatively at the end of this year with an asterisk. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I also have a master's degree in public health from the University of Waterloo, and my Bachelor of Science was in Microbiology from UVic. Uh, so I have about over 10 years, I guess, maybe 12 years, um, of professional research and academic experience. Uh, these are some of the organizations I've either worked for, uh, collaborated with, or provided different products for as a contractor. Um, so some of my achievements and I guess career uh, experience and highlights so far, uh, I used to work as an epidemic data analyst for a company called Metabiota, who uh, the company was focused on uh, epidemic risk assessment um, and modeling. So I did a lot of near real-time event-based uh, disease surveillance using different open source data and different languages, uh, cleaning and coding and reviewing uh, data for the, uh, the company uh, data platform uh, for different clients. Um, I also developed uh, or led the development, I guess, uh, in partnership with our engineering team and the initial evaluation of an automated uh, outbreak event detection system. So with this, we used a lot of open source uh, data and media reports on uh, disease outbreaks occurring around the world in different languages. So I learned a little bit about text analysis and uh, NLP here, which was really interesting. Um, I completed a number of different literature reviews for different organizations. Um, these here kind of focus on rural and re remote communities in BC. Uh, so I, I uh, completed some research in, uh, uh, or literature review writing, I guess, uh, for best practices in uh, implementing day programs for older adults in rem rural and re remote communities um, and implementing uh, culturally safe and trauma-informed and patient-centered healthcare delivery in the Northern Vancouver Island. I also work on mathematical model development uh, currently, so looking at the effectiveness of these disease control measures. Um, and I've also worked in health research funding coordination with the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research. Um, I have done grant writing as well um, in an international development context. Uh, so my applicable skills and knowledge are pretty interdisciplinary, um, public health, so lots of areas in surveillance, program evaluation, disease ep uh, ep epidemiology, social determinants, uh, things like that. I've also uh, gained a bunch of skills in mathematical modeling, uh, differential equations, uh, things like that, math biology, um, and some of my technical skills there. Some of my strengths, I think, um, I'm a big systems thinker, uh, looking at uh, issues around One Health, social determinants, um, wicked problems, things like that, I find really interesting. Um, 
big picture and small details, both are really important to me. Um, and I'm a very curious person, so I ask a lot of questions. Um, why, what if, what then, and what now? And I think those uh, get a lot of interesting uh, answers that you might not really think of uh, if you don't ask those questions. So I'm always interested in uh, interdisciplinary and collaborative work in uh, disease modeling, uh, emerging infectious diseases, One Health, uh, novel data sources, things like that. So we'll leave it at that. So I'm happy to chat later. Hi everyone, my name is Iris. I am a fourth year PhD student at, in epidemiology at McGill University and also the University of Bordeaux in France. Um, so first about my education, I'm currently doing my PhD, as I said, in epidemiology. Um, I also have a master's degree in epidemiology from McGill University and a master's degree in public health data science from the University of Bordeaux. And my background is actually in more in biology and medicine, so I did a master's of molecular medicine um, at the University of Regensburg in Germany, where I'm from. Um, currently, I'm working on mechanistic modeling to estimate the effectiveness on non-pharmaceutical vaccinations um, and vaccines against COVID-19. Um, I'm also doing a lot of methodological simulations, um, and I will hopefully soon move on to a more epidemiological project, which is to estimate vaccine effectiveness in a cohort of blood donors. Um, so my relevant skills include um, epidemiology and uh, specifically um, infectious disease epidemiology, um, but also from my master's um, infectious disease surveillance. Um, I am an expert in fitting compartmental models, so with um, ordinary differential equations um, and also agent-based models. Um, from my master's degree, I have a strong background in data science too. Um, I use softwares like R, Python, SQL, Monolix, um, and I also have a strong background in scientific writing and presenting. So my um, achievements include a scholarship of the um, FRQS, that's a funding agency in Quebec, um, then a scholarship um, from the University of Bordeaux. And there I'm also part of the Digital Public Health Graduate Program, which provided me with a lot of opportunities. Um, I have several publications in peer-reviewed journals, um, and I have presented at um, a lot of conferences and seminars. And so for my career aspirations, I really want to work at the intersection of data science, epidemiology, um, public health. Um, so I have a strong data analysis side, but also this epidemiology part is important for me. Um, and I would like to work either in governmental research institutes or um, non-for-profit non institutions. And with the main goal of improving the health of not in only individual patients, but groups of people or populations. Thank you. Hi everyone, and uh, thank you for uh, 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 being here. Uh, I'm Rahel Bosna. Uh, I'm Rahel Bosna from York University, Department of Mathematics and Statistics. Uh, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at York University. Uh, I was a university lecturer for 12 years in Iran and Hungary, and, I, uh, and also I was a researcher at Budapest University in Budapest and uh, in, in Hungary. Hungary for three years. Uh, my background is in uh, applied mathematics. I did my PhD at Budapest University uh, in Budapest, Hungary. I, uh, I did my uh, MSc and BSc at the Kaintus University in uh, Tehran, Iran. Uh, my field of research is the partial and ordinary uh, uh, differential equations, mathematical modeling, and mathematical biology. I have 10 publications in Springer and Elsevier. Uh, uh, actually, uh, my recent work, uh, in my recent work, I considered uh, the impacts of policy measures to control uh, outbreaks on cruise ships. 
Also, I work on workplace absenteeism due to COVID-19 and influenza uh, across Canada. And also, I uh, studied the transmission of malaria propagation in my PhD program for five years. Uh, uh, my major skill is modeling infectious diseases with uh, dynamical systems. Uh, I saw uh, I can um, analyze dynamical systems and solve them numerically, and I uh, program with MATLAB and Mathematica. I have collaborated with uh, National Research Development uh, and Innovation Office in Hungary, Sanofi, and NSERC. And uh, uh, I plan to pursue my uh, research in, uh, on mathematical modeling on infectious diseases, analyzing mechanism of infectious transmission, uh, projecting uh, infectious uh, for, the, for the future uh, impacts, and studying effective measures to control outbreaks. And if you are interested, you can contact me via email or, uh, or on LinkedIn. And thank you for the attention. I'm Avneet Kaur, in second year of MSc in Mathematics at University of British Columbia, Okanagan. And I'm working there as a teaching and research assistant as well. Very excited to be here. Thanks for the opportunity to present. So I'll demonstrate. Okay, so I'll demonstrate my skills, achievements, and expertise through some of my relevant projects. Um, so, talking about my machine learning project in which I analyzed a data set, a clinical records data set taken from this research paper listed below, to predict the survival of heart failure patients. So, I implemented various machine learning algorithms like logistic regression three uh, algorithms, random forest, in the R programming language. Um, the data set was quite small, so I used validation and cross-validation techniques to find the prediction error of, of various models. Um, and then considering the trade-off between model complexity and model accuracy, I determined the best model, which also gave me the significant predictors involved in uh, predicting survival of heart failure patients. So I was able to achieve an accuracy of around 82% uh, compared to 74% in this original paper. Okay. Coming to my MSc thesis project, which is on incorporation of pairs in disease modeling. So we know disease dynamics triggers pairs such as pair of disease and pair of vaccine in the population. As a result, people change their behavior, which in turn changes the disease dynamics. So it's essential to consider this feedback loop while uh, developing models. So uh, I started by working on an existing model uh, in behavioral epidemiology, which is like clubbing uh, behavior with epidemiology. Uh, and I worked on mathematically explaining the qualitative results obtained in this paper from where I took the model. And then I identified the limitations of that model and modified it while uh, keeping in mind the theories of human behavior and theories from cognitive science. Um, all the plots and uh, these simulations are done in Python. And I've been using libraries such as NumPy, Matplotlib, Panda, SciPy, and SimPy. I'd got an opportunity to present my work at various levels, such as at CAMES Conference, which is Canadian Applied and Industrial Mathematical Society, um, OMNI Reuni Super Spreader Seminar Series, OMNI stands for One Health Modeling Network for Infections, and that's where part of my funding comes from, um, and also at various lab meetings at my university to both math and non-math audiences. Okay, coming to my published work, so first one is, um, a summer research internship that I did at Indian Institute of Technology Mundi in India. Uh, and that was my, during my undergraduate and also my first research exposure, uh, where I collaborated with another research student to dynamically model criminal and non-criminal populations in an artificially simulated society. Uh, and we were able to 
get our work published in the Journal of Mathematical Sociology in less than four months. And that was a big achievement for me, being a first time research uh, researcher. And more recently, I participated in Omni the Uni uh, summer hackathon, that's hackathon for health. Um, and I worked with a team of 10 members comprising of MSc students, PhDs, postdocs, and professors. Uh, this project was on a review paper for modeling of monkeypox, and we got it published in Epidemiology and Infection Journal. And lastly, all this technical writing uh, has been done in LaTeX, so I'm experienced in scientific writing. Okay, to wrap up, uh, given my programming skills, not limited to the one uh, languages I've mentioned here, uh, my communication and presentation skills, uh, the ability to collaborate in team projects, uh, my problem solving skills and expertise in mathematical modeling, understanding data, machine learning, epidemiology, and human behavior. I find myself fit for roles in healthcare industry and also roles relevant to data, such as data analysis, data science, data engineering, um, machine learning, and software development, given my interest in programming. Okay, thanks for your time. Here's a QR code from my LinkedIn profile. Please feel free to uh, scan it. I'm happy to connect with all of you. All right, thank you very much for everybody going and giving their short talks. Thanks for being 